Hey what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to another tutorial about Git. Welcome again, in this episode we're gonna take a look on how to use git revert, that is a command that will save our asses a lot if we do something wrong and we commit or push to our remote repository something completely wrong. So for example, uh, let's take a look at the index.html file that is full of these like super amazing code and super amazing paragraphs with all our really important information. So let's say that I decide for like I don't know, project related reasons to delete these paragraphs. I save it, I do a git status and I have the index that has been modified. So I commit and add at the same time. So git dash am and I say updated index.html file. That's perfect. I push, perfect. I go check my remote repository. I access the index.html and I see that all those paragraphs that I had before have been completely removed. If I go back, I have the last commit that is updated index.html. If I check the history of my commits, I will have also these that I committed 24 seconds ago and I have the name of the commit and whatever I did. It's That's perfect. That's awesome. Now, uh, that happens that a couple of days pass and I didn't touch this code and uh, I close my text editor, of course, I reopen it and a previous developer like my boss said, oh, can you put back those paragraph files because they're really important and we need it like now, immediately, panic attack. Of course, I could access my uh, Git repository, my Git repository, my remote one, and check the commit that I did and see the uh, difference between the files and say, okay, I can just simply copy this and paste it back in my file and I have it back. But this is a really simple and easy uh, to solve case scenario. What if you actually did something that you uh, completely removed, like 20 files altogether, or you recompiled a file from a different source. Now you have to revert back that source and recompile the file and speed out the file how it was two days ago. This is more complicated. You cannot simply access the commit, copy manually all the files and finger cross everything is gonna go right. It's gonna be like pretty insane. So that's where Git will help us with this really sweet command that Sometimes it's cumbersome, it's like convoluted, complicated, it could throw you off sometimes, but if you get acquainted with it, it will save you a lot, especially in these cases. So if we type git revert and we specify the git commit, the actual code commit of the um, action or the push, the commit that we want to revert, we can revert the status of all those files that we changed up until that commit, up until before that commit. Uh, the code commit is stated pretty much in uh, all your remote repository or local repositories. So we have it here, the last commits that it is, like the 2, 7, blah, blah, blah. So we can access this, we can copy this commit code access back our terminal, git revert, and specify the name of the commit. And let's hit enter. Automatically, git will prompt with the vim or like the built-in editor inside our terminal to ask us what you wanna do with this reverting, reverse commit with the previous one. And let's simply say, because we don't have any merging error, just simply column Q to say just quit and proceed. That's perfect one change has been reverted and the revert was the commit that we did before updated index.html5 if we access our editor we have back our stuff of course nothing happened on the remote repository because now if we do git status we're gonna have a message to say hey your branch is ahead of one commit it means that the revert created a commit to say revert this file back so if, if we simply type git push automatically we're gonna push to our remote repository this new file without creating a new message committed again because automatically the git revert created that commit for us and if we access our remote repository and we go back in our code we're gonna see that here we have a commit say 
revert and the name of the commit. If we access the file, we have back our paragraphs. That's perfect. So what if, <laughs> what if, other case scenario, and this is the worst, uh, let's create some noise. So let's access back our editor. Let's remove this, save, then I wanna update the style and create a paragraph style with the ground color at zero, zero, there it's red and that's perfect. And then update my git ignore and say that I wanna ignore the license something absurd that you shouldn't do that, but it's okay. Now, if I do git status, I have three files. Say I wanna commit all these three files in a different way. So let's say git add dot git ignore, and then git commit the git ignore to say, remove license from git tracking. Then let's say git add the index.html and then git commit data paragraphs. And then let's say git add the style.css. And let's say git commit created p style. Simply like that. And then let's git push. This push is gonna push to the remote repository three commits because we created three different commits here. We have these, um, these for the git tracking, this code for the paragraphs and this code for the style. That's perfect. If we access our remote repository, we're gonna see in the list of commits, we have uh, created a P style, updated the paragraphs and removed the license in reverse order of the commits that we generated. That's pretty normal. What if now we need to revert back to this initial commit, this one, remove the license from git tracking. And I mean, I can simply do it by just copying this commit and do git revert commit that and it's gonna be fine. But sometimes I, uh, because I'm working super quickly and I don't have access or I'm not looking at the remote repository, I just know that my commit was three commits ago and I need to revert back to three commits ago, I don't wanna spend time in checking the exact same commit code that I wanna revert back. And that could be confusing, like what this means, what this means, I don't know, like I should compare it and see the uh, commit messages. Sometimes I just know, oh, I need to revert back to three commits because the, the last three commits that I did were wrong. So git revert gives us the ability to do the same. So let's say it's just simply git revert and let's specify that we want to revert our head that is the current location or the, the point in time and space where our git repository is let's go back of tilde three the number of commit that we want to reverse we're going to have a error most likely we're going to have a merging issue here we have the head and here we have the code like git doesn't know what to do with this file so let's just simply uh, fix the issue and it's gonna be totally fine. Let's save it. If you say git status, we're gonna have the modified, but the edits that I did at the about page, the style or the license or the git ignore to remove the license, they haven't been touched because I simply jumped back in time and I just repristined or reverted back only the files included in that commit. And that's pretty handy. If we wanna include also all the other commits that we had in between these heads, we can say git revert head tilde five, that is the oldest one, like the, the, the start of my history commit that I wanna start with, and then all the way through the head tilde one or two or three or whatever commit that you wanna include. So you start with the oldest one and you hand to specify the most recent one. And with these two dots specifying these two points in space, automatically Git will revert all the files at that original status included in all those commits. And of course, uh, if you have some files that you didn't have before or the Git ignore is creating some stuff, like most of the time when you try to revert multiple commits 
all at the same time, you're gonna have some merging errors, you're gonna have some reverse failing, so um, it's always better not to do multiple commits altogether, do one by one, even if it's kind of tedious, but at least you have more control. This is like a blatant example of how easy it is to break these things, because just had the license that it wasn't included, it was removed from the tracking from a previous commit, and it's creating some issue just one single file so imagine if you had a really complicated project with multiple files git revert and reverting multiple commits all together it's kind of hard to make it work uh, if it works for you amazing you're the lucky one <laughs> but always it's better to do one commit one by one and as i show you you can go and jump back in time and revert just few files from a specific commit and avoiding all the other ones so that's pretty handy to keep track of your git repo and fix some issues that probably you did or like revert back of status on multiple files without you copying and pasting the source code manually and that's pretty handy. So it's pretty much it for this lesson, I hope you enjoyed it, if you did please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel and if you want you can spend a couple of minutes on the support me page of my website where you can find all different ways and methods to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again guys and until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding!